All right, folks, got a fan going in the background here. We are in Columbia, but it is cooler now. We're in a rainy season, thank God, because it's cooled down significantly. Uh, I'm going to let her rip here, folks, so I'm going to let you know right off the bat. If there's any women or small children, you might want to clear them on out the back before I get started here. Um, I sincerely mean that. If you get highly offended quickly, clear on out the back or hit the stop button on this. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Oh my goodness gracious. For, the, for those of you who know your boxing, it stands without reason, you know who he is. For those of you who don't, he's the owner or president of Golden Boy Boxing Promotions. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a talk about this sex, this deviant, because I can't say that word, S word on here, this deviant pervert, Oscar De La Hoya. For those of you that don't know, he's been over there on Instagram putting out naked pictures of himself, thinking it's all cool, uh, thinking this is just the best thing in the world to do. Something ain't right with this guy upstairs. Let me tell you something. Something is not right with a guy uh, in his late 50s, and his 60s or older, putting out half-naked, naked photos of themselves online. Something ain't fundamentally right upstairs with somebody that's doing that. Uh Hundreds of messages up under these posts he's putting out. You need to carry yourself better in this sport. I'll go you one better. De La Hoya, your ass needs to be banned from this sport. Uh, I, for one, am sick of your dumb ass putting up half-naked pictures of your weather-beaten ass. And that old weather-beaten whore down there at that swimming pool and blasting it all online. There are kids that watch this stuff. There's women and small children that watch this stuff. Uh, there are millions of boxing fans that are younger. And they turn on and they say, this filth you're putting out, boy, you ain't nothing but a piece of damn trash. And one day you're going to run up on my old ass. That's fact. And you ain't going to like it. I don't get, I hope you got Bernard Hopkins standing right beside your dumb ass. Because he ain't going to like it either. Filthy. And you're disgusting. You don't hold a candle to Mayweather over there. And those de decent people. You don't hold, you are the filth of boxing is what you are. You're the filth of it. And any of you dumb asses, such as Bernard Hopkins or the rest of your dumb asses, and Roy Jones Jr., if you see this, you know I like you. You know our kid, my kids are going to the school your kids went to. Now I'm going to tell you something. Get away from that damn filth because you are guilty by association. You up there hanging around these jackasses, you're one of them. And you're promoting this filth coming out if you're doing it. And that goes to any of you out there. Any of you out there. I don't care who you are. Now, to Ryan Garcia and Daddy Garcia sitting over there, who's running around. Uh, you know what? It's real funny, Daddy Garcia, that Ryan's only putting out, you know, my mother, I love my mother, I love my mother. And he... He don't ever really say a whole bunch about yourself unless he's questioned first or whether he feels like your dumb ass is being left out or something. You should jerk that boy up right now and say you ain't hanging around this deviant over here. 
That's the kind of filth that people will put out that will molest a child in a second. Now, going over to the second reason why I know this. Uh, all you WWE fans, back in the day when Jim McMahon Jr. first got a job working for uh, Vince McMahon Jr., first got a job working for his daddy, Sr., uh, we all got to see him on TV. He was a little 21, 22-year-old little weirdo then. We all spotted it. We all knew it. Y'all didn't see what we got to see early, back in the early 70s with this guy. Uh, you look at all this filth and this ore going on here. It makes me look over there to Oscar De La Hoya. Him knowing that all this filth's going around right now. And... and that's a psychotic mind in Oscar de la Hoya in this, these days with all that mess going on. And you know he knows it with this wrestling promoter and him pulling this sick shit over there. Uh, I, oh my God. I don't know what to say. It's a filthy, disgusting world out there. I thank God so much that my son is so much like me that he don't like that kind of mess. I really, really do. I thank the Lord God every day for that. Uh, I feel so bad for you young people that are growing up in a shitty world that don't have a strong father behind you. Because if you've just got a loving, coddling mother, you ain't going to survive in this filthy world. Uh, you ain't going to survive in this filthy world unless you've got a damn strong male influence in your life around this filth that you're bombarded with constantly. And anything you see, hear, or watch... And it's sad. And uh, it'll be over my damn dead body. Listen to me good. Before my son would ever, ever involve himself with Oscar De La Hoya. That didn't happen. Never happened. Ever happened. Never. Not in a million years. Uh, that sick, phony, punch drunk pervert oh my god go over and look at the filth if you're an adult go over and instagram him and look at this filth he's putting out look at his look at his old weather beaten whore this tagging with him looks like i guess it's his wife i don't know but for her to whore herself out on these pictures with him she's a whore that's one thing i do know and you take one look at her and one look at him, and you know she's a whore. Yeah, Oscar, get somebody up to come fight us. You take offense to this, pick any one of you fuckers out. I think isn't uh, that weirdo Roly with you? I, I hear every every time Joe looks at him, he's like. Joe, I know I out, uh, uh, Dad, I know I outweigh him by 25 pounds, but I don't care if I had to get in the ring with that boy today, I'd break his damn jaw. Yeah, you know, why don't you get him up and try to get him to come on down here? I can't stand you, man, the filth going on with that. Filthy and it's disgusting. Uh, there's a time and a place for trash like that. And uh, being a boxing promoter or a boxer uh, or a professional athlete in general and putting filth out like that, it's monumental. And for those of you, that, for the few of you that are going to get on there, well, you're too rough. You're too rough. Uh, or you wouldn't do nothing. Uh, yeah. Think again. I'll, I'll back up to anything that ever comes out of my mouth. And, and furthermore, I'll total whooping. Defending my beliefs in things like this. Uh, I'll, I'll tote it and take it. It's more than a lot of you will. And I'm a damn old man. Damn near 100 year old. And uh, 
especially with all this mess going on in this wrestling. Look, folks, I knew it. it uh, uh, we used to go watch these wrestling events at the Charlotte Coliseum back in the late 70s. Uh, we were living there, and uh, we were fortunate because we could go to the Coliseum uh, once or twice a month. They'd do loop-throughs. And the tickets were cheap. Uh, we could go down there and sit about be front row or one row back uh, in the seats right at ringside. And uh, from the, the 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 first match I saw with Ric Flair wrestling Jimmy Snooker and these guys got out, and I, I ended up getting to meet one of them at different times. I wasn't impressed at all. Nothing more than glorified uh, acrobats. Uh, that's nothing. They're like Hollywood stuntmen. There ain't nothing too awful much about it. Uh, really, and I, I met quite a few of these wrestlers, these older wrestlers, these wrestlers you'd know in the 70s and 80s. And uh, other than David Schultz, uh, I, w I wouldn't uh, touch him with the at the far end of a flagpole as a bad dude. But I know what bad is when I see it. And other than David Schultz, I know never met one of these damn guys that I felt like was about much ado about nothing. Uh, I met a bunch of gym idiots, uh, which you go into a bigger gyms today and you see all these huge guys and, uh, yeah, you look at them and you laugh because you know there's no way in hell 98% of them could defend themselves, running around acting like tough guys. And uh, I've never liked that anyway. I've never liked that. I've always commanded uh, the area around me when big guys come up. I continue to do so as an old man. And uh, so, I mean, I know the wrestling's been filthy and all this mess going on. Uh, all these wrestlers that are coming forward now saying, well, I knew something. Yeah, you knew it all along. And you, you, chose, you chose to sell out and whore yourself and be a prostitute for dollar bills because you were too stupid, too weak-minded, and, and, and too much of an unbackbone some bitch to go find something else to do because you was a loser from the start. Uh, even all you guys, you know, I look at Ric Flair today. Uh, loved him, loved him, loved him. Still do. But he's nothing but a big baby. You hear <laughs> when he's talking about something. Nothing but a geek. Uh, Guy, uh, these all these guys were geeks. You had some of them that weren't, uh, and I got a lot of wrestling stories I can tell you. Uh, the old wrestler Baron von Reisky, uh, his wife uh, substitute taught us a whole lot in the sixth, seventh, and eighth grades, and. Uh, uh, Boy, she had a lot of stories. He was legitimately a tough guy. But nothing I'd write home scared the mom about. The only one I really met was Dr. D. David Schultz. And if you don't know who he is, go look him up and find out some stuff about him. That dude was really a tough dude. That would See, I'll admit it. There's a lot of people out there I wouldn't go after. But I'm going to damn well tell you something. Oscar De La Hoya ain't one of them. Half these damn guys boxing today ain't one of them. Three quarters of 99% uh, of these wrestlers ain't one of them. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, one guy I wouldn't want to meet in a dark alley, a light heavyweight uh, bare knuckle champion in Great Britain. Uh, I, I know who. I can look at a guy and tell. And uh, I'm old. That's something that comes with age. There's a lot of guys that scared me 30, 40 years ago. I look at now and go, what the hell was I thinking? You know, uh, it's psychology to it. It's psychology to everything. And when you see something you know ain't right, with these 
deviant people, when you see it and it's hitting your brain, it ain't right. Don't let what other people are thinking. Well, he's making money off of that. Or he's do, uh, this is how it is now. Or blah, blah, and blah, blah. Young guys, don't fall for this damn mess in this world today. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't be a sellout. Let me tell all of you something. The real mark of a man is taking care of his kids, seeing that they got food, shelter, clothing, education, and actually rearing them and teaching them how to become adults. That's a real man right there. Uh, above and beyond all that, all that damn mess, uh, you're getting into a sinful nature and a bad ball game altogether. You just, just what you're doing. Uh, instead of if you, if, if you really want to be a good man, young guys, that's what you need to be thinking about doing. It's not necessarily being the greatest husband in the world, but once you've brought offspring into this world, being the greatest dad that you could possibly be. And that and a great dad's not one one that's handing out money. A great dad spends time. He makes time. He won't go out here and pull these extra hours of overtime so he can get that truck he wants or this this thing he wants over here. He'll say, Nope, I gotta sacrifice that. I need to spend this time with my kids. That's the mark of a great dad. That's the mark of a tough guy right there. That is a tough guy. Not some half-ass boxer or a wrestler or boxing or wrestling promoter getting out here putting half-naked pictures of himself and a weather-beaten up whore online or a weirdo wrestling promoter over here with a deviant family knowing he's done it for 50 years uh, out here uh, messing with little boys and small women. Uh, Ain't nothing good about none of that. And if you sell out for that, you're going to have to pay for it in the end. And you need to remember that. Get your asses straight. Start to think it. It ain't all in a dollar bill. It ain't all in a dollar bill. One day you're going to be old. And you're going to be gray. And you're going to be wrinkled. And you're going to be on your deathbed. And the last thing your ass needs to want is for a demon to be crawling up right there at the very end from the foot of your bed and coming up on top of you and yanking your very soul out of you and taking you down to hell. Because that's exactly what's going to happen to you if you let money, power, fame, and all the rest of that crap guide your life. You need to let doing right guide you. And if you do that, what your heart desires that the good Lord knows, because he knows all of it, maybe he gives you the heavyweight championship of the world. Maybe he gives you the seat to be the CEO, the chief executive officer of the Ford Motor Company or General Motors. Uh, maybe you're the inheritor and the next in command of SpaceX or something like that. But I'm going to tell you what you in store for you go into filth like that and you start following that world. When it comes in time for you, that demon's going to be crawling up on you. You're going to see it whether your eyes are open or whether they shut. And all these people, you can have a thousand people standing by, around your bedside mourning for you and they ain't going to be able to see that demon coming up on you and sucking the life's air out of your soul and taking it down there to hell. If you don't want to believe it, you go on and believe whatever you want to believe. I know uh, what I know. And you can choose to believe it or not and go on about your merry way, have fleeting nakedness around you for a, a moment's pleasure or whatever and craziness and pervertedness and all the dollar bills you can put in a suitcase. You look over there at that big mouth guy. I forget his name. Uh, he fought for Floyd Mayweather. Where's he at now? Can't even get a fight. Was flushing hundred dollar bills in a hotel room down the toilet. That idiot. Uh, Adrian Broner. You want to end up like that? Uh, 
Have you not heard the tales from Mike Tyson saying, you know, when I had all this money and had all these things, I was the most miserable I had ever been. It wasn't until I sank again that I start finding peace and stuff. So, then people, be careful what you're watching out there. Be careful what you're doing. And be careful what that heart of yours desires because it can be deceitful amongst you out of all things. So be careful out there. Oscar De La Hoya, a shame on you. Vince McMahon, shame on you. All those wrestlers that worked over there for nine past 50 years, shame on your dumb asses. You ain't no tough guys. Hear all this crap about how tough you guys are. Uh, yeah, take it somewhere else to somebody else that will buy those lies.